up, people? What's up, what's up, what's up? So, I see you're in the chat. What's up, Chris420 Dragon? What's up, Paul Tarchala? What's up, Fingerprint Customs? <clears throat> what's up, Skull Squad members? How's it going? So, welcome, welcome back to another episode. This is the t-shirt the series. I'm trying to get this t-shirt series knocked out um, and try to get you guys some of, uh, some of you guys on the t-shirt track. I feel like by now I've seen some of you guys practice so much and you guys know uh, pretty good how to do a lot of this stuff. And I'm, I'm just going to walk, I'm going to baby walk you through getting your airbrush uh, t-shirt stand and your little displays all together. So we've gone through. Uh, if you haven't already, we have a video uh, for the shirt boards. So we'll be using a shirt board again today to paint on, right? We'll start with this and I'll go ahead and switch the camera over. <clears throat> so we're going to be painting on a shirt board today. So we have a video for the shirt boards. If you're not familiar with it, make sure you go back and watch that shirt board video. Very informative video. You won't be disappointed. Uh, what's up, Owen White? What's up, Bobby Lifford? What's up, Big Wheels? What's up, James McLean? How's it going? What's up, everybody? Um, <clears throat> and then we do have a video or a couple videos on the t-shirt designs. And in those videos, I talk about the material that I'll be painting on here. So if you haven't gone back, make sure you go back and watch those videos. Now, today we're going to be working on what is about a six inch strip. And then we're going to be doing about maybe one foot or like maybe 10 inches, like a piece. And inside that area, we're going to be painting in some uh, nice effects. Um, the reason, um, and again, this go all goes on to your t-shirt display. So if you're going to be out there having, a, you know, trying to airbrush, I know I talk a lot about being at the markets, but I never gave much advice. So here we are going through those steps. One of the displays um, that I have learned to incorporate uh, through time is one of the effects. And I think instead of using clips, I'm just going to use spray adhesive. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so. At, when I first started, I did not have this, and I did not know uh, many effects. Um, and that's probably one of the reasons I'm going to go through and walk you through this today. When it comes to your airbrush um, venture, if you're out there at your market set up, whatever it is you're doing, and you have a couple of these t-shirt designs set up, one of the... Let me turn this down. One of the easy ways to help sell your products or to upsell a customer or to, to um, you know, help them customize their t-shirt order because every customer is going to want something slightly different, right? Um, <clears throat> a good display of various effects is a good way to have that um, and have it happen and make it happen without... Uh, too much of a hassle. So we'll do 10 inches here. So let me just get a pencil. And we'll mark off 10 inches and we'll go through some effects here. And we'll do this for every single effect. We'll mask it off so we have a nice clean edge. Um, nasty tape. And maybe we'll just use. Like I have another piece of the Palon, so we'll use a piece of this. What's up, Easy Airbrush? And so, yeah, so in the past, I did not have this, and then I learned to incorporate it as I learned a bunch of effects and a bunch of things just being out there painting. And uh, one of the things I realized is that it just helps to have it up. Because the customer is always going to ask, like, oh, well, can you do this? And can you do that? You know, can you make it look like it's dripping? Or can you make it look like it's cracked? Or, you know, various, various things. And, um, you know, having something that's quick and easy to point at, like, yeah, like, you mean like this? And they go, yeah, yeah, exactly like that. That's, that's exactly what I mean. Well, then let's do it like that. 
that's an extra three bucks, five bucks. Or I, you know, I could throw it in, no problem. You know, depending on what their order is, obviously. Um, it's so you can upsell these if they want like um, certain effect inside the lettering and then a certain effect on the outside. So you'll see that a lot uh, where on the inside they want, you know, like for example, we'll do like a spider web, you know, right? We could do a spider web background. Um, but sometimes they'll want that inside the lettering, but on the outside, they want it to drip, you know? And so you spend more time adding these effects, more time, more money, again, on you to say how much you're gonna be uh, up charging or whatever. Um, but here, I'm gonna just walk you through um, some that I have found to be pretty helpful, pretty useful. So I'm just gonna go through here, and uh, we, I've shown this a lot. And this is one that's, you know, a lot of you guys might already have. And this is the splatter and texture attachment. Uh, we sell these obviously on the mikesbrush.com. Uh, but you can use something as like a paper clip, um, the end of a flat pencil like this. And you just spray paint off the edge. Um, I do believe there's some other companies that sell some kind of uh, texture attachments or. There is a way to get certain airbrushes to spray kind of like a texture, um, depending on what you, like you could take off the nozzle on certain ones or something like that. I'm not quite sure. Um, I just know that I have this. It's really simple. It's cheap. Mikesbrush.com, get yourself one. And all you do is put it on the end of your airbrush, like so, right? You got air, you spray some paint. This paint right here, this red's already dry. Um, and it just pretty much does it for you. So I'll do like a pre, you know, do a test spray on one spot and then let it rip potato chip. And then that's just black and I'll come in and we'll do like some gray. And this is pretty much the first um, texture and that is like a concrete type texture and all I'm gonna do is do the texture with the black the texture with the gray and then I'll go back and add in then I'll just go back and add in some cracks so we'll come in here and some nice little cracks here. And pretty much with that attachment, it makes it super easy. Um, like I said, I have multiple videos talking about how you can use the end of um, uh, <clears throat> a clothespin. You could also use like just a regular piece of paper, fold it into like a V, like a little cup. There's multiple ways of achieving the same effect. But ultimately, um, you end up coming up with the same result, which is all you need. And this is pretty much for when somebody walks up. They're gonna ask, hey, can you make it look like, like some concrete or something? They're like cracked up, wham, you just point up at it. You mean like that? Oh yeah, that's exactly what I mean. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, a lot, you say they work so well, I love mine. Yeah, if you already have one, you, you've already probably experienced this where you're just doing this effect. It almost seems like a cheat code for this this type of effect because you, all, then all you do is just add in a little shading around the splatter that, that, that does. And it looks really good. Honestly, you could do, like, if, if you do use, like, a, like, a tans or something like that, like, certain colors, 
you could probably go through and, and do like a house, like a texture on a house, and it would probably look really good. Like if you painted the, primered the whole wall, like, or based it out, like in an eggshell, and then went back and did like a texture, like with a white or like a lighter eggshell, or maybe even a darker tone, and did the whole wall like that, I, without doing the cracks, right? Just the texture itself, it would probably look really good, and it would be completely flat. And that texture attachment would make it super easy. All right, so there you go. And I'll give you guys a close up real quick. Close up time. And it's super simple, nothing too complicated. You don't have to, don't like overdo it. And make sure you're gonna just be able to repeat it and do it again. And then all we're gonna do is use that same piece of paint on that we popped off. We're gonna leave a little bit of space right there. I should probably mark off here. Let's measure off before I end up with something and then my OCD ends up going, what the hell, man? Why does it look like that? Blah. So we're gonna do about an inch. We'll separate the textures out by an inch. And I'll try to make sure we have about 10 inches right here. Okay, so this has to go about there. The next one. And this is just so they look nice and clean. Also something I recommend, if you're out there doing doing your thing, make sure everything is, looks nice and clean and neat and organized. Do not just like scatter your stuff. I don't know why. It does help though. The customers will perceive this as like some sort of more zen with your artwork or something. I don't know. I really, <laughs> I don't know. I just know it, it does help if you are more neat and organized. Uh, let's see here. Need another piece of this payload. Need another piece of payload. Can you cut me a piece? Cut me a piece. Cut me a piece of that payload there. The reason I say that is because I have seen people that are very efficient um, using like uh, what most would consider to be a mess, right? I've seen people work in a mess and be very efficient um, and it doesn't seem to bother them at all. But I have seen people also that a mess and then they are just all over the place. They, they cannot find things. They don't know where, where everything is. All that good jazz and it's, yeah. It shows, people notice. So more often than not, if you just have a nice clean looking setup, you're good to go. <clears throat> From here, um, another one that you really don't even need a stencil for, and that is just a, a quick drip effect. So there's multiple ways to display this. You could just make it drip off the top here. Um, and that's probably what I'm gonna do here. Uh, but before I do that, I'm just gonna take some gray. And just drop in some gray around the edges. And then drop in a quick drip effect. And this is probably one, like the most common requested thing oh yeah i want the lettering but can you make it look like it's dripping i want to like drip drip i want purple but i want to look like the purple's dripping yeah yeah it's just everything is dripping <clears throat> so yeah uh what's up james mclean thank you thank you what's up mark erd uh what's up anomalous cool and then so we're just gonna go in here and start dropping in our drip effect. You're off already? What time is it? Don't drink the oh my gosh, wow. Uh, you could come over here, you know. That's okay. 
Why are you scared? You're the star. I'm the star. You're the star of the show. Sure. Teachers are not stars. That's not how that works. <laughs> That's not how that works. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh my gosh. Do not idolize me. I'm not a star. <laughs> well, I don't even know what that means. They can't even hear you because you're too far away. Bullshit. Why, you go back and watch yourself? I go back and they see your reaction. pretty easy I mean you do you it's pretty easy just drop in some dagger strokes you know nice little drip effect you're good you're good to go you're good to go now from here <clears throat> the one that's probably gonna come up a lot and um, if you just have it on display people might not ask people will just ask for it instead of asking if you can do it Cause that's <laughs> that's always something that can get pretty annoying and uh that is the bricks can you make it look like bricks can you do bricks and rock the uh, outside i want it to be like my name but i want it to look like it's on the brick wall uh, whatever it is that um you're gonna hear you're gonna hear a lot of different uh ways uh, but just having a nice brick stencil easy way of doing it again this stencil is available mikesbrush.com um, and yeah, pretty pretty easy bacon. You just put it in place, and you're good to go. And we're just gonna stick it on. We want our display to look pretty pretty good, pretty good. You know, you want the display to look pretty pretty eye. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> and um, we're gonna take what we have. We're gonna take one of the textures. We'll lay that over the inside. We'll use a little bit of red first. That's pretty much it. Just a little bit of texture. Not too crazy. We'll clear out this red. So the whole point of these, right, is that they are essentially the way that you're going to customize um, the, the, all the designs that we've gone through in the videos uh, for the airbrush designs. Um, so these is all the ways that you could add in effects on the back. Um, so nothing too crazy, nothing too, too um, fancy schmancy, you know. Um, but it is super easy to have. And when I'm trying to decide what color it is, I'm trying to decide on the color because it's pretty red. I think I'm going to go with orange. Orange! Yes, it is. Um, so when the customer walks up and they can be like, well, what can you do? You can easily go, well, like, you can do like any of these backgrounds here. You can add this. Bam. So I'm, all I did is do a little bit of texture, and then I'm just going to fill in. Going to hit all them edges with some orange. different colors whatever doesn't really matter all that matters is you have this up because when somebody asks then you just tell me oh yeah can you do can you make it look like brick and you just come in and you go yeah like that like that one just hit that inside a little bit of shading you know bit of black. So pretty much super important to have this one. Skin it like I yeah. The amount of times I've done this is like mind-boggling. Like you'd be like, "What? No way! Nah, you don't. You know, I don't believe that's way too many." It's like, dude, <laughs> dude, I don't decide what the customers want. The customers decide what the customers want, and if the customer keeps ordering the same thing over and over, I, I, I just gotta keep painting. So we're gonna measure out an inch. And then 10, same down here, measure on an inch, 10, and we'll, there, there they are, so I'm looking for these. See, and the cool thing about leaving these little borders here is that later on you could add in, if you add in a little symbol or something, it gives you a little bit of space, as well as it obviously makes it defined like which one is which. 
Um, but if you wanted to label them, you know, you could also label them right in that area right there. Makes it super easy. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and then from here, one, like another pretty basic one, but one that's also like people will ask for it so much. Um, it's just a good like camouflage effect. Um, and having a good texture stencil like this one works pretty good. Um, let's see here. Let me see here through the old box of little stencils. Back in my day, you used to need little stencils right, right here. Mm -hmm. let, me find, let me find the one I'm looking for. Let's find those. Brush.com. This one, this is part of the mosaic kit. So if you wanted to do more of a jungle type camo, digital camo, jungle camo, it's super popular. Um, you, you're like, I don't know where you live, but most people live around an area where there's gonna be some sort of military base uh, within a hundred miles. Military people is people just like you and me. They like things. I like things. We all like things and they like to buy things. One of the things they like to buy is things that have digital camo that represents that they somehow in the military or something. You know, it doesn't really matter. Sometimes they just like to decorate stuff with the, the camo. Sometimes people that's not in the military like to decorate stuff with the camo. It's fine. Cool, easy colors to use. It's just using tan, like uh, it's like the color sand. If you can use sand and brown and black, blam, you're good to go. Um, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. We're gonna just do like a um, what, what 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 would we call it? Like a winter type camo? Cause cause we in Colorado, so I'm just gonna do gray and black. Super easy, super nice to have. And pretty much all I'm doing, spraying that over. We're gonna switch it up a little bit, move it up a little more maybe, lay it back down. Spray a little more gray. Get down in that, Woo! Get down in that, Woo! Lay a little down, spray a little gray. Get down and I get down and I bam. And then we'll put the last piece down here. And then we'll flip it over maybe. Some black, some blackity black, blickety blickety black. <laughs> um, 
never airbrushed anything but you say you might try it for the first time. Thanks for swearing. Hey, you're welcome. Good luck to you. I haven't been doing it long. It is fun and addictive. <laughs> uh, yep, you get to just get a jig sure. It's it's kind of fun. So if you, once you start having fun with something, it's done dealy. Done dealy. Once you start having fun, you're done, son. Once you've had enough push-ups, let the push-ups start feeling like like you're doing them because you enjoy it. That's when you know. Now, of course, we're doing this in the process of setting up the airbrush stand and setting up the displays. But I could imagine that no matter what you're out there painting, whether you're out there painting tumblers, whether you're out pa there painting fishing lures, whatever it is, having a display of the different sorts of effects and, and different types of way that you can decorate uh, said item is probably like 1,000% a good idea. Especially for face-to-face -face sales. Right? You got the customer right in front of you. The last thing you want to do is say, I could do that, but I can't, sh I don't have anything to show you for it, like right now. You know, because they'll be like, oh, that sounds good, but what are, what is it going to look like? Right, because you could imagine it in your head, but that doesn't mean the customer can. So, like, 1,000% having a nice display. Is a quick and easy way. E easy. Just easy way. Of um, <clears throat> just increasing your overall sales. So again, no matter what you're out there doing, say you're set up for tumblers, right? You got your little table set up, got all your tumblers, maybe right behind, or right underneath the tumblers, or whatever your fishing lures, or whatever it is, you just have a nice little banner like this sitting down. And when people ask, like, hey, what's that? Oh, those are just the different kinds of effects that we could do on some of the artworks that I can offer you. Oh, oh, dang. You do more than this. You do more than that. You do, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, I do the tumblers, but I could also do this. I could, all, I, yeah, I do the lures, but I also could, boom, make you a shirt real quick. No problem, easy, easy cakes. Anyway, there's four. Then, then I'm going to show you here at the end everything we've gone so far. Everything I'm going to show you just how much stuff you're going to have already to set up. If you've just gone through three videos, the minimum that you should have. All right, so we did four squares. On that one, let's measure out and cut it out four squares long. Let's see here. Let's see here. Measuring tape. Uh, so, 40 plus 4, right? Let me just measure this one out. Yeah, let's do 44 and then if we have extra I can cut it off like I'm gonna cut the other one off so let's measure out 44 44 with our our super duper accurate measurement here we're gonna measure out 44 in the most accurate, super possible way right here. We'll 
will say it was right, right about there. Then I can go back later and fix it. It's totally fine, it can be fixed. Okay. In case you're wondering, yes, this is what's left over after cutting out our 14 by 14 squares that we used for video one and two. This is kind of the top part of that roll because we did buy a roll of um, Palon. And this is that top part, you know, you can see here where we cut out 14 square and then we just measure out another one. This is that top piece. Again, Palon, Palon, P E. L L O A. So P E L O. <laughs> That's it. That's it. P E long. That's how P E long. That's how you say it. Let's get Webby splatter. Yeah, so pretty much this, if you haven't noticed already, this is pretty much where all the, the Mike's brush uh, kind of stencils will really shine. And, and, and um, you know, all the stencils on there are pretty much designed in a way to facilitate and make the backgrounds and all the stuff real easy. Um, I obviously know that a lot of you guys are gonna end up cutting your own stencils and stuff. There's no reason for me to make more some of the more specific ones. What is smart and what makes sense is for me to help you get to the point where you can make your own stencils and that's where all these background stencils will help. So yeah, from here, it's, it's pretty much all up to you. What you wanna do, what you wanna do, what you wanna do when they come for you. So there's all kinds of ways you could decorate a background. Um, here. I'm trying to think before I start just reaching in for stencils and just pulling out all the stencils. I, have, I mean, there's, there's all the stencils you can think of right in here. And uh, I'm just trying to think of the most common ones before I start. But I do think, let's see. I do think we hit all the most common ones already. Um, one that I have seen uh, more and more, I get more and more use out of is this stencil right here. And this is the stencil out of the mosaic kit. Um, and I've, at first, it was just kind of like a adding it in the background kind of thing, but uh, as I as I've used it more and more, it's become a really nice stencil for just a lot of stuff um, and adding textures and all kinds of stuff. So this is one that I want to have for sure on my setup. So I'm gonna just take the time to set it up now. I think the first four that we did just now are probably the most common ones, for sure. And they're the most basic. You really don't need much of a stencil or anything to accomplish those other ones. Um, these ones are gonna be a little bit more specific. I'll just stick that down. A little bit of orange. Just a little 
little orange through the texture. Through the texture. The texture attachment, oh geez, running out of, running out of words. <laughs> there's something going on outside. I don't know if you guys could hear that. There's like a, a fire truck and then there's like a dog howling or something. 55 inches gives you five for banner. Only a few more to get and I have them all. I'm cutting out a stencil today by hand. Yeah. What's up, Chris? How's it going? Yeah, if you ever cut a stencil by hand, you know the, the pains. Uh, especially by hand. By hand, it's like, ah, son. Um, so I'm going to do some purple. Just so we have a little bit of variation in the colors up on the displays. And it'll give us a nice brown with the orange in certain spots. And I'm just going to hit this little texture in there. I'm going to try to let a little bit of that white shine through. And a lot of people will be like, yeah, this is stuff that's going to slow you down. And that's why at the beginning I talked about how this is stuff you could like charge more for. You know, anytime you, you start spraying and adding stuff. It's kind of like the, the Netflix premium, you know, you, you could start off with the, the simple stuff. But if you want that 4K, son, then you want to you want to stream on on multiple screens and all this stuff. They gonna charge for that. They gonna charge for that. And so don't feel at all like guilty or something. Like at the end of the day. I think most customers understand that like more work means more money. And for every person that might worry about it, there's like another guy that just take my money, you know. <laughs> Seven EVP and search for this. What? It's Mike's brush. Hello, hello. Oh no, is Violet on the computer over there? <laughs> he said, yeah, okay, they never understand. Yeah, I mean, if you're in an area where they don't understand, then they don't understand. Then I'm just going to lay in some pink here. And we'll fade it going off that way. Again, you could do this like inside the lettering. You could kind of fade it out going around the lettering or around your design. Um, multiple ways you could add this in. Simple. It doesn't really take much, much effort. Right, let me give you guys a close up. see the splatter from the orange there then the purple and then the pink fade looks really nice simple clean and you add that into the lettering and stuff and maybe we'll do that I'm gonna do out these next three effects and then maybe we'll do one nice clean lettering design with effects and stuff um, kind of how I did the script lettering the first time
Oh, what's the name of the Discord account? Oh, there's there's a Discord link down below in the links. Uh, right underneath the video, there's there's a description. All the links are right there. It says they want fifty dollar design for the twenty dollar price. No, 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 sir. No, you cannot have the fifty dollar design for twenty dollar price. Not today, sir. Today we are very busy. Look, move it along. I got things to paint. Is when I was doing airbrush body art parties, they wanted four hour prize for five to six hours. Shoot, 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 son! No, 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 no. All right, next one we're gonna do is just some simple spider webs. This is again super easy, super popular thing to do. Um, Ever since I've had these up, it's like bananas, bananas, and um, you know you get different ones in the set, so you're able to like scatter them around, and just having uh, some nice spider webs, easy, easy, my guy. Like, like, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's one of the most popular, but when you have it for sure, people are going to ask for it. And again, if, if you're, if your whole ambition out there is to just have some sort of success, definitely have spider webs because kids like it, adults like it. During, it's like during certain seasons, like right now, Halloween, um, it's one of the good seasons that people will like it. Um, yeah, it's just super, super easy, super quick. Just go in. I like purple on this. We'll do purple and black. We'll make it nice and dark so the spider web sticks out. This design's kind of more pink, right? So this one's gonna be more, more black. Yeah, and I've probably gone through a bunch of these. <laughs> these these stencils, these spiderweb ones. a bunch not gonna lie <laughs> the reason I go through them so so much is because they're kind of thin right and the more you use them they, they kind of get caked with paint well eventually the glue like the spray glue like I would just spray it on there um, that's kind of what reminded me is I sprayed it with glue the spray glue it gets so good on there that um oh there it is some, let me get some more of the spray glue. It gets so good on there, though, that um, it, um, it ends up ripping the stencil when you try peeling it off. Like it sticks really good. <laughs> Oh, 
what they what they want and what you expect is that the artist to the decision. Yeah, I mean for sure, for sure. But it makes it super easy, like for the customer and for you, if you just have some some sort of visual way of letting them know what you can do and kind of what it's going to look like. Obviously, you know, it doesn't have to match exactly. But just having something that looks pretty good, you know, it's super easy to do. And there you go, just some nice quick spider webs. Just fade in some color. I'm just using some fluorescent blue. I'm hoping maybe we can have some RGB lights in our setup, so hopefully in some night night raids or something this will show up there you go pretty simple then i can, i gotta include this one because for some reason it's something that gets asked for a lot and that's the honeycomb one um, but let me measure out the next one so a honeycomb pattern i don't know why but it see it's just it solves it solves uh, and it's really easy to, to add into your designs and you can see obviously in the first through the first um, first set of designs was pretty much stuff you didn't really need it stencil for and then the second set is kind of more specific and these are ones that just kind of I know from doing them but they you know, they will help you. They've helped me. Hopefully they can help you, Daniel son. As long as you can wax on, wax off. <laughs> there we go. So then let's get our hexagon stencil out. But yeah, from here, I like I said, I wouldn't shy you away from doing like scales, you know, like the texture effects, like having some sort of amoeba type like that. I'm gonna just keep it to two rolls. I'm not, I don't wanna overcomplicate the things, but then if they start asking for stuff, you know, it's good to have it. So the next one we will do is, is one for scales. Um, and obviously you could use a scale, a scale set like this. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use my big scales, um, which is over here. Why is it working? Yeah, here. So the big scales, and that's kind of what I think I'm gonna do on the last one because um, it makes it super easy. We got our hexagon pattern or our honeycomb pattern, whatever you want to call it. Um, these are hexagons. Um, so yeah. Why does it seem like the music keeps getting louder and louder? Or am I getting quieter and quieter? I can't tell. Anyway, just a nice honeycomb pattern. Um, and we're just gonna do it real simple. And uh, again, just to add variation onto the onto the board here, we'll use brown and uh, yellow, just so it does look like a honeycomb. Look like a honeycomb. And I'll just do a little bit of brown, a little bit of that good old brown. Now when you're doing these, when you have it laid down like this, 
Don't be afraid to like make some stripes like this going across them. And then when you reposition it, always like overlay. You see how it has these three? So it has those three so that you can overlap it to the next one. This, I believe this is part of the mini effects kit. Um, so if you're interested in that one, that's also available on the MikeSpress.com. The mini effects kit includes a honeycomb pattern. So if you're interested in that, that's where you get it. Again, a lot of the stencils on there are pretty much designed to get you to the point to where you can get your own plotter and do all that. And by then you'll already know what designs you need and all that and you'll know how to make them. The first part is just getting you, getting you to being some sort of successful and having some sort of, um, you know, be out there and having fun at it and not get discouraged. And that's where these videos can really help and doing shirts can really help. Sometimes if you're doing the fine art stuff, you get it stuck in a rut. Um, if you're doing motorcycles and stuff, sometimes it'll be seasonal. So, you know. There you go. But even if that is your goal is to do those type of things, having these out there really helps because then people walking by, no matter, I can't even tell you the amount of times I've been out doing shirts and had these up and then somebody walks in, Hey, could you do that on a motorcycle tank? Yeah, yeah, I could. So. so fade in from the sides. We're going to do some stripes going this way. Like opposite to the ones that we laid in before. Then all we're going to do is lay in some yellow. Some good old yellow. Amelis, you just be asking the, like all the inappropriate questions. What was the turnover in profits? Like for real? For real, son? Man's gonna show you his work, and that's what you're most concerned about. So now all I'm going to do is add some yellow. Yellow kind of going over the top there. Right. Quick, fast. The honeycomb setup. <laughs> you try to get a feel for what you should be charging. So what he charges it ain't nothing to do with what you should be charging. Ain't nothing, nothing to do with what you should be charging. Everybody's at different skill levels. 
and can achieve different things in different amounts of time. That's all going to be personal and depending on where you live. You know, some people might live in, in not such a great area. Some people live in a fantastic area. If you live in a fantastic area, you might be able to get a little more than the guy that doesn't live in such a great area. Does that make the guy that doesn't live in such a great area his work worth any less? No. Does it make the guy's work that's in living in a great area really worth that much more? No, not really. They ain't got nothing to do with you, boy. You better make over your own prices. Like I said, even in these videos here, I make suggestions. But it's all going to depend on where you are, what you're doing. <laughs> so everybody worry about yourself. I always say that. Worry about yourself. Always worried about this. And the reason it annoys me so much is because I've been there where that's the main, somebody's main focus and it's the wrong focus to have. At the end of the day, be happy you're painting. Make a little money. Be okay. If you're comfortable with what you're charging, that's okay. At the same time, trying to find follow somebody else's steps. You shoot yourself in the foot. Trying to chase a dream. Don't really exist. Just gonna say, just gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Eventually you're going to run into that guy that says, oh yeah, I charge $1,000. And somebody else just told you they charge $100 or $60. You're going to be so conflicted about what to, what to charge. Where do I sit? And that's where what I'm telling you now comes in super important. Because it's all going to be based on your own personal skill, your own personal talent, how much you can afford to do in one hour, how many tips and tricks you know, how, what kind of skills you got up your sleeve, you know, that's where all this comes in handy. If you know all this right off the bat, as opposed to trying to learn it on a job by job basis, it's going to be a lot easier for you, but that doesn't mean easier, does not mean it's to get cheaper. Anyway, we'll do our scales on the last one. do some scales and I like this setup here with these scales because it's a little bit different a lot of people always have the other scales they're super common which is kind of like in reverse so when you ask you could have them both and depending on the color they ask for you could set them up one way or the other Maybe you have a big enough setup, you can set them up both right next to each other. That's totally okay. But I like this. Yeah, if they're willing to pay your price, then you're not taking advantage of them. Exactly. Exactly. It's not like you're looking at it the wrong way of taking advantage of somebody. They are paying you for your services. 
if you say a price, you know, and they say okay, you don't know what's actually going through their head. Whether they think it's a great deal because they think you're going to spend so much time, whether they value the talent and know that maybe you've spent a lot of time, um, you know, developing your craft. You know, you never know what's going through the customer's head. But if you say a price and they say, okay, and you're comfortable with that price, one, always uphold what you're going to say, what you just said. The amount of horror stories I've heard about, oh, yeah, this guy told me this price, and then I gave him a deposit and never seen him again. Or, yeah, you know, he came and he started, and then, you know, he, he didn't have this and he didn't have that. Always, always uphold what you say you're going to do. So those scales, a little bit different. Is that why you were laughing? Yeah. <laughs> You're funny. Why does this one go? Oh, sure. I told her I'll buy you snacks. You can take some snacks. Now I have snacks. It's okay. You're almost done anyway, yeah? Yeah, last one. Okay. Okay. What do you want? Nothing? Uh, energy drink. A uh, pack of energy drink. Huh? They're so expensive there. Oh, well. Yeah. Love you. So there you go. I've been paid like $7 for a nice portrait <laughs> and portraits. <laughs> oh my God, $7. Oh. So for any project, I've, I've broke this down before. Um, I didn't know if we were gonna take it there today, but I guess we got it just, just for the sake. I guess if for shirts or for anything, you're always gonna take in, first off, what it's gonna cost you to accomplish your project. So for a shirt, obviously the very first thing is you have to have a shirt. Most shirts, you could have them for about $2 or $2.50, somewhere in that range uh, as of this year, 2022. <laughs> uh, if you're watching this in the future and prices are like $5 a shirt or something, I'm sorry, we didn't take care of the plant or whatever it is, whatever the excuse is for prices being that high, uh, yeah. Um, but you know that's the first thing. So you're gonna take it to 250. You're gonna take in how much paint you're gonna spray. Most cases can be about 50 cents to a dollar's worth of paint, maybe. Um, so maybe you're at 350. You know, and then taking your time, how much time you're gonna take. Uh, so you know, most shirts, uh, like like typically, the, the shirt designs that you see around, um, they usually take about. Uh, anywhere between five to 15 minutes, so it's not too bad, so a dollar a minute, you know, so <clears throat> technically at the end of the day, if you're paying yourself, um, you know, you also gotta take into account wherever you're set up, uh, like so your space, like so if you're going out to a market, they charge to set up at a market usually, um, so take that into consideration, electricity, all that jazz, but if you're paying yourself, usually, you know, if you charge about a dollar a minute, you know, you're making about 15 to $20 per shirt. And if you subtract the $5 it's gonna cost you to make that shirt, I mean, you're still doing pretty dang good. At that rate, you, you, if you make four shirts in an hour, 
you're making about $60 an hour. That's not bad. There, there's not bad numbers. Them is not bad numbers if it's just for you. Now, if you're really fast um, and you're really good, there's been times where I've been super busy and super slammed and I'm knocking out about 10 to 15 shirts an hour, uh, maybe more than that. Um, and then that over maybe like a 10 hour day uh, at an event or something like that. Um, and you guys could do the math on that. Um, so yeah, it all kind of adds up and that's why we have these and do these. And that's, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm trying to show you guys to maybe just have a little bit of a, a little bit of success at your stand. And as I put together this stand, just for this videos, um, this whole series of the, the airbrush t-shirt videos, um, we have accomplished uh, the effects. Again, that's eight different effects that I would definitely recommend that you have up. Um, if anything, if you're not good at these or whatever, just make sure you have something. Even if it's just three of them, make sure you have something to show so when customers come up and like, hey, could you make it look like that? Yeah, we can. We could do, there's one right there that like that's our example blah 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 it'll it will help you a thousand percent have sales like it, it's it's like basic business 101 you have to have a sample um, for customers to be able to see so make sure you have a, a samples of your textures it's something that i learned over time something that i'm telling you right off the bat it's like secret information um, so hopefully, you know, helps you out in some sort of way. Um, from there, uh, as we build this stand up uh, for you guys and to just to show you guys how it all works, um, that's it. That's it for today's video. We have our effects. I'm going to show you guys. Oh, yeah. I was going to show you guys everything that you should have at this point um, to show to customers uh, at this point. Right. And we've, we've probably been live for about an hour today. We did about an hour in the video number one, an hour in the video number two. Uh, so about three hours worth of work. And at the, at the minimum, the minimum of what you should have to display at your event for potential customers that are walking by, right? They're gonna be walking by, they're gonna be like, ooh, what's this guy selling? What's he got, right? So the next, um, probably in the next few videos, we'll go over <clears throat> the stand, like how to have just a nice little airbrush stand. And I don't, let me see if I could set up all these or not, but we'll try to set up all these designs here. So you'll have all these designs. Obviously they're not going to be overlapped, but you see you have one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It looks like we have ten so far designs plus two texture palettes with four designs a piece. That's eight. So at the bare minimum, if you've done video one and video two, you should be somewhere in that ball ballpark of just ten things that look really good and nice and clean uh, that we can display. So in the next few videos, we're gonna go over how you will display those and just some key important things that you might wanna keep in mind when you're putting them up. So, so let's see here. Just move these down so you can see these, what we accomplished today. So for sure, have some kind of cracks, some kind of drip, some kind of blocks, some kind of camouflage, scales, honeycomb or hexagon, the, the spider webs, and some kind of other type of variation of a cracked or like, a, you know, a nice, like, I don't even know what to call this, but people really like this. It works really good. I call it the mosaic, mosaic kit. It's available on the MikeExpress.com. Get yourself one. Um, other than that, 
having all this set up, again, it's just a quick, easy way to help upsell. Um, we'll go over a few things in the next few videos. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Hit that like button if you like today's video. Subscribe if you want to see more. Um, consider joining the Skull Squad down below. If uh, <laughs> Christopher Tweed Dragon says seven dollars, don't pay for the paint. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> On a portrait, yeah, no. Um, so yeah, consider joining the Skull Squad down below. It all helps make more videos like this possible. If you like today's videos, if you want to find the stencils that are I've used in today's video. Uh, consider ordering off the mikesbrush.com website. That also helps bring you more videos like this. Um, and again, I'm just trying to help you guys have some sort of success out there in your airbrush uh, career, adventure, whatever you want to call it, your hobby. Um, you know, even if it is just a hobby, there's no reason why you can't make a quick little dollar off of it. Um, especially if you're just out there having fun. Um, it's all good and, and it's all good. So we'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one, everybody. And uh, later, later. Peace out.